ready to get this started? All right, so good morning. I'm Dr. Tammy Clark. I'm the Dean of Clinics at Palmer West, and I'd like to extend a special welcome to the current ninth quarter class, as well as their family, friends, and faculty. So I'd also like to give a very special shout out and thanks to Monica and Chuck and our IT and facilities team, as well as your class rep, Matthew, for all the hard work in making this special event possible. It's a lot of coordination to pull together events like this. Today, we will be officially recognizing our newest group of Palmer West chiropractic interns. This pinning ceremony marks a very significant milestone in your journey to become a chiropractor. <clears throat> it marks the culmination of two and a half years of hard work so far, and it also marks the beginning of the next phase of your chiropractic education, your clinical internship. You began your journey at Palmer at the beginning of a global pandemic, when your classes were online, and you had to learn to learn in a whole new way. On your journey thus far, you have been preparing for this day through countless classes, endless studying, more exams than you care to think about, and some more coming up very soon, and hours upon hours of hands-on practice. You have undergone a tremendous amount of personal and professional growth on your transformation over the last couple of years. I got the privilege of working with you all last quarter in Corcoran Val as you started integrating all of your clinical skills in preparation for student clinic. I got to watch all of you start pulling it together and look at you now. I have to tell you, you look fantastic sitting here in your white coats getting ready for this day. So, we are going to officially mark your transition right now from student to intern. Your class, this group here, is a group of individuals, but you're going to be joining a larger cohort and it's a cohort that's made up of Palmer interns, clinicians, and clinic staff. And we're all going to be working together with the common goal of providing the best care possible to our patients in the clinic. We will all continue to constructively challenge you and continue to shape you as you grow. As you begin seeing patients in the outpatient clinic, you will have times where you may feel overwhelmed maybe even a little uncertain, and maybe overcome with some doubt. But I want to encourage you to take ownership of all of your experiences in the clinic, even your uncertainties, because they will happen. What's going to happen is you're going to be feeling really good about yourself, and then all of a sudden you're going to totally forget how to adjust the cervicals, and then what can happen? Or you've been doing really good on something, and then you're going to lose it. That's normal and then you'll get it back. Some of you are nodding your heads because you've already had that happen. Or you will, but I want you to embrace those uncertainties, embrace those experiences, all as a part of your growth, and make every effort to get the most out of this experience. I want to take a moment to remind you why you are here. I think it's good to pause sometimes and to remind ourselves where we're at and why we're on the journey that we're on. You, you are here because you have chosen to take on the responsibility of being a physician. You have chosen a career where you will be responsible for guiding your patients to optimal health. And you have chosen Palmer West to learn to become the best doctor chiropractic you can. In practice, I often hear patients say, I never knew chiropractors were as thorough as this. I, or treat patients the way that, that you treat them, or the way that they're being treated. Or I hear patients say, I never realized that doctors could care so much. And I always respond that that's because you've never met a Palmer West chiropractor before. That's what you're going to become. That's what you're already becoming. In this next year, you're going to be building your very first chiropractic practice. And you heard me right, I said your first one. Some of you are dreaming and thinking of your first practice after you graduate. But in reality, your very first practice starts right here in the Palmer Clinic. 
You're going to be responsible for the care of your patients. You'll be promoting and growing this first practice of yours. You'll be working with your exceptional staff that is here to support you every step of the way. You're going to have colleagues looking look around. It's you guys are your each other's colleagues. And you're joining the colleagues of all the rest of the interns. And these are your colleagues that you will be collaborating with on your patient care. You're going to be guided by your mentor clinicians. You will be supported by Dr. Betty and I along the way. And it's going to be up to you how much you get out of this practice for yours, this very first practice. And it's going to be dependent on how much effort you put into this. I also want to establish right off the bat that your time in the clinic is so much more than just earning the minimum number of credits to graduate. We're going to set a high bar for you, and we have a high level of expectation for you. This is about laying the foundation for the kind of doctor that you will become in the future. I want to encourage you to be mindful that as you work your way towards your final degree, that you are more than just a technician. You are becoming a physician. You represent the chiropractic profession, the future of the chiropractic profession, and you represent Palmer West. And I have no doubt that you will represent us well. So today is actually a very special day. I still vividly remember my committee ceremony, and that was quite a while ago, and I was sitting right where you are. I remember the lessons I learned from my mentor. I remember the patients I had when I was an intern at Palmer West and, the, and just the imprint that they put on me as a young doctor. You will remember this day. It's an important day. I remember Dr. Snow when he was a new faculty member at my pillow ceremony. And I remember all of the experiences along the way that laid the foundation for the kind of doctor that I would become. Years later, so but I do want to I want you guys to trust me that this next year of your career will be one of the most formative times in your life. I consider it a great privilege that we get to be a part of this journey of yours, and I trust that you will all continue to make us proud as you enter the outpatient clinic. So that's me going on and on. I'm gonna go on and on again in just a little bit. But right now, what I want to do is turn this over to our senior campus administrator and dean of academic affairs, Dr. Snow. He's going to come to the podium and say a few words to you as well. Thank you, Dr. Clark. Good morning, everybody. Congratulations, you guys. Great to see you at this point of uh, your education here. And looking forward to an exciting next year for you. Uh, Dr. Clark said I would be saying a few words, and that's always a challenge for me to say a few, um, but I'll try not to blather on too long. I've also uh, learned from experience that what I always want to say at the painting ceremony, she said before me, so I come to speak off the cuff today uh, and just tell you a little bit about what I foresee for your next year and, and how you can make the most of it. And absolutely, I share Dr. Clark's feeling and and uh, I guess advice that approach this as if it is your own clinic uh, and, and take advantage of the fact that rather than in your own clinic where patient retention and your ability to communicate and everything else uh, is what either makes patients stay or leave, here and for the next year is your opportunity to develop those skills so that you're more effective afterwards. And the great thing about our clinic system here is it's actually rather robust. And it's robust in a way that uh, is not common at a lot of chiropractic colleges. We actually attract the majority of our patients coming in because they have problems that they're paying us to get rid of. So we're not largely recruiting families and friends and bringing in people who are here because they have some sort of love or responsibility to the intern, they're coming here because they have a, a need and they're giving up their time and their money to have that need 
fulfill. And so there is no better experience for you than that. And the major driver for our patients here isn't necessarily our entrance. Now that's a, a plus because they get patients that want and need care, but it's a negative because you don't have to work that hard. And chances are when you get out into your practices, you're gonna have to work that hard and much harder. Because building a practice involves sweat equity, right? Uh, it's, it, unless you're walking to a practice where you're family members ready to hand the reins over the well-established clinic to you, you're going to have to work hard to make this work. And so this next year is one year of opportunity that you have to make that happen. Yes, we will give you patience. Yes, we have enough patience to get you through our system. That's not a good education. It's good experience, though. And so I urge you to consider this over the next year. And approach it in a way as if it were your own. And not only that, but if your ability to pay your rent, buy your food, and make your loan payment was resting on having patients come to the clinic and stay in the clinic. Because that's the reality most of you will soon face, right? And one of the keys probably, I guess, underserved or under uh, mentioned keys to your success in practice is Unfortunately, not your ability to adjust well. I know you can do that. I've seen you. Uh, it's not your ability to examine and diagnose. You guys are outstanding at that. In fact, I think at this stage, you're probably, if, if we were going to, and we're not, but if we cut you loose out in the world where no licensure and graduation was required, you guys could go out and get people well. You're green, right? You need the next year, you're going to ripen on the vine. But you actually possess the skills necessary to do your job. So the next year, again, is that time frame where you can really take advantage and grow. So that, you know, you just get incrementally better and quicker at being successful once you're in practice. But the key skill that isn't often addressed is communication. And so that communication comes into play in a variety of different Ways. It comes into play when you're out about in the public with your family and friends, but also with people that you don't know. And being able to have the confidence and comfort level of going up to someone and say, have you tried chiropractic care, uh, is, is a little anxiety probably uh, generating for you at first, but it's something that will be crucial to your ability to be successful. And then once that patient's in your office, being able to communicate with them again about what you do, why you do it, what, what the care is going to look like over time and how it's going to work is another very crucial piece of your ability to successfully communicate. And so communication is like adjusting. It takes practice and repetition to get good at it. And so what I'm urging you to do over this next year is to make sure you talk a lot, find out what the questions are, and answer those questions. And you guys over here, ask them the hard questions. And don't let them give you, let them give you answers that don't make you satisfied. You're helping them with those. Um, and as Dr. Clark mentioned, I think, or at least alluded to, Remember why you're here. Remember your core value. Remember why you got into this profession. And I assume the reason you're here, as the majority of you, as with the majority of our students, is you truly have a desire to get people well and help them have a better quality of life. You did not get into this profession to earn credits. And I know those credits, with, you know, that's your money, right? Everyone wants the money because you got to have the money to graduate. So we get that you need your credits to finish. But as you'll also, if you haven't heard it already, will hear, the patient always needs to come first. When you put the patient first, the credits will follow, and in your practice, the money will follow. You put the money first, the patients will see right through you, and the patients, some of them, will go away. Uh, and it becomes a harder struggle for you. 
So maintain your integrity, maintain your core values, maintain your interest in uh, serving patients well. When I, I was the dean of clinics before Dr. Clark for 16 years, so um, I'll just end with this note. I, I used to show uh, little slides of my daughter's autobiography that she wrote in second grade when she was seven years old. And it was really cute because, you know, anything a seven-year-old doing uh, little crayon drawings with writing under, underneath is pretty cute. So at that point in her life, she, she thought maybe she would be a chiropractor, and so she had this whole story in there. And at the end of the story, she was an angel up in heaven, and she was talking about her legacy. And the quote that she wrote at the bottom is she said, I want to be remembered for helping people live without pain. And, and that's the purity of thought that I hope you guys will take with you into your clinic experience for your patients and for what you're doing there and bring that forward and I think it will serve you well. So again, great to see you at that stage. I look forward to seeing you a year from now on the bigger stage and uh, I congratulate you on your efforts today. Wait. Now, I'd also like to invite to the podium Zach Scott. He is our ASG president, and he's our actually outgoing ASG president. This is his last last time as that will be bringing in a new ASG group following this quarter. And before I bring you to the podium, I do want to thank you for all of your hard work and efforts as you speak to this class. But we, we actually, as the body of Palmer West, we work together not just as administrators, faculty, and staff, but we work with our students and through our student government as well. And Zach represents that. So Zach, I'll give you a moment up here at the podium and now get my mask back on and re-navigating all of these again. So, so again, this is Zach Scott, our ASU president. Hey guys. You guys made it? Nice. Oh, Happy to be here with you all. So good morning everybody. Well, first off, it's a great privilege to be given the opportunity to say a few words here today as we celebrate a substantial checkpoint, not only in your careers as students, but in your professional careers overall. While the other speakers today have a great amount of experience uh, and advice to provide you all with that I don't, one of the things that I definitely can talk about is what it's like to be a student at this stage in the process. Being in the 19th grade, is it 19th grade? Yeah, it's not close enough, right? 19th grade gives you a weird perception of how good of a practitioner you'll be uh, within this profession. Up until now, you've gauged your success and self-satisfaction based completely off of objective grading following tests and assignments. Although this is an, an uh, unhealthy habit, a lot of us tend to accidentally compare those objective measures with the small cohort around us. This tends to factor into where we think we stand in terms of our progress of becoming a great chiropractor. Having gone to school with your class for more than a year now, I can tell you all that your group is bright, hardworking, and committed to excelling in this career. For this reason, you're all probably very hard on yourselves due to your drive to improve your skills and, knowledge, and your knowledge for the purpose of helping others. The best advice I have for you all that took me until just about this quarter to realize is that you, you uh, excuse me, is that before you can become the best chiropractor possible, you need to become a chiropractor first. At many times, while we're holding ourselves to high standards, it's easy to forget that we're all still students. This career that you haven't even entered yet is one that many have been trying to get better at for the past 30 years of their lives. And if you're trying to be comparative, that's a little bit of a head start compared to the rest of us. The job of a chiropractor is to be a good chiropractor, and the job of a student is to ask questions and take advantage of every opportunity possible to know more about what you don't know. This next experience for you all in the outpatient clinic shouldn't be used in order to compare your cap credit reports or worry about what you missed out at the $3,000 seminar last weekend that you didn't get to go to. This time should be used to put yourself into uncomfortable situations without having fear of them going on according to plan and embracing the mistakes that may come with them. In other words, if you don't like it, then try it. The odd part about this approach, the don't like it, then, if you don't like it, then try it approach, is that you'll likely help someone suffering from more than 10 years of chronic pain feel the best that they've felt in a long time. Being at the ceremony means that you'll have worked hard enough to know, you've worked hard enough to now have the privilege to have a random individual trust you to improve their state of health without them even knowing who you are. You should be very proud of this privilege because it's an opportunity that not many have, nor have the ability to do, and I have no doubt that each one of you is going to do really well at it. 
So with that being said, congratulations, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all on Monday. So, as we begin the official pinning part of this ceremony, I'd like to share a few final thoughts for you to reflect on about the discoveries that you're going to make as you continue on your path from intern to doctor. So as, you, as we go through this part, what I want you to think about is what you're going to discover in the coming year. You will discover the importance of your words and you're going to discover just how powerful your touch is. You're going to discover how important it is to understand that your patients are human beings, not just diagnoses to be treated. You're going to discover that to truly understand pain means understanding your patient, understanding their values, their worries, their hopes, their dreams. You're going to discover that empathy and human connection is critical to the healing process. You are going to discover the humbling honor and responsibility of the commitment that you will be making between you and your patients to take responsibility for their care personally and with excellence. Being a chiropractor means a lifetime of learning. You've been hearing a bit about that, just to remind us it starts now, it's actually already started a few more. But it also means exposure to human emotions at the best and sometimes at the worst. And mostly, you're going to discover that being a chiropractor is a calling, not just a profession. So, with all of that said, and thinking about all those things, it's come to the, it's come to the time for the presentation of your pins, which will formally symbolize your transition from student to intern. Dr. Betty, who is our West Campus Director of Clinics, is going to read off the names, and when your name is called, you'll come forward, but give us just a minute to move this podium over, and we'll let you guys take responsibility for that. Testing, testing, it's working. Congratulations, here we go. Nicole Carver. Thank you. 
Brandon Palm. Thank you. 